So, the holidays are over. It's the drab, frosty, cold dregs of winter. You're a few pounds up since the holidays were a dietetic disaster. The kids have gone back to school and the silence is deafening. And you keep seeing articles about seasonal affective disorder. Oh, and eggs cost four times what they did last year this time. Kind of got you down? Well, consider young Viktor Frankl. In 1942, at the age of 37, Frankl, an MD and a PhD in psychiatry, along with his parents, wife, and brother, were arrested and sent to the Theresienstadt concentration camp. Frankl's father died there within six months. Over the course of three years, Frankl was moved between concentration camps, including Auschwitz, where his brother died and his mother was exterminated. Frankel's wife was gassed at Bergen-Belsen. So maybe your post-holiday situation is so bad, huh? Upon liberation from the camps in 1945, Frankel used his experiences to develop his theory of logotherapy. It's a therapy designed to rise above oppressive situations and the associated mental states often conferred by them. By one, creating a work or accomplishing some task. Two, by experiencing something fully or loving somebody. And three, by the attitude one adopts toward unavoidable suffering. Modern self-help gurus have rallied around the first point for some time. I reference Simon Sinek's very popular start with why mechanism for focusing on accomplishment rather than resistance and struggle. Experiencing something fully or sharing a love with someone is a train of thought championed by the author Byron Katie. Byron Katie counsels her followers to do the work of facing the contributing issues and reversing them until the depressing one being focused on is only one of many possibilities. It takes the student outside of their interpretation of an overwhelming tragedy and opens the door to other possibilities. But it's this third point that I find myself using often personally and with my clients. And it's concisely explained in the quote from Frankel's book, Man's Search for Meaning. Between stimulus and response, there's a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. It's here where Frankl suggests that regardless of our situation, regardless of our level of dissatisfaction or our level of victimhood, we can choose to be happy. We can choose joy. It can be ours when we learn to access it and not collapse under a mental shroud of being permanently upset at that last eight pounds from over the holidays. You didn't get that Lamborghini for Christmas? Maybe a good friend passed away over the holidays? You got a bad fourth quarter review? You can choose, in Frankel's words, the attitude you adopt toward unavoidable suffering. It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.